hello lolas <laughs> welcome 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 back to my channel i am here with baby nigel guys if you're not subscribed to this channel go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to this channel now by clicking the red subscribe button also click the bell to be a part of the notification squad guys there's a couple things that i have to tell you as always if you want to join the chatterbox please make sure you join by clicking the link in the description bar i will most likely go live tonight um depending on when you see this video <laughs> i didn't think about that but anyway uh, uh, there is, you do have to be at least 18 years old to join and it is a dollar and 99 cents a month to join for exclusive live streams and also, oh, get your merch. <laughs> um, if you click on the link, there is a more, um, Ada's, uh, line um i don't need your approval line um her little with um mask and stuff like that and everything i think i told you guys that before but anyway so we have that um also i am getting really close to finishing up a baby i don't know the pricing on it just yet um depending on how it go because i try it my standard price is usually the same but sometime if depending on how it come if it come out you know not quite how I want it then um, it don't necessarily be a boo-boo baby but just not how I really wanted it to be or not where I think I want it to be for the price range so I'll lower the discount it so it may be a discounted baby but I don't know until I finish because I don't know she's changing around she was a at first, she was looking like, oh, this is not going to make it. Now she's starting to come to life. And I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know, girl. You you, you kind of looking cute. So um, I'm, I try to be honest with my price. And I don't just put one blanket price because I don't think that's fair. If, if the baby doesn't meet that price range, in my opinion, then I'm, I'm not going to put it up to that. Um, but if it does, then yeah. And then every now and then... If it's like a baby that's just like go past every doll that I've made ever in life, maybe I will probably jack the price up um, higher than my normal price, if I should say. But for the most part, I've been pretty consistent in selling at the same price, um, which my reborns usually as ball babies been selling between $750 and $800. And then my um, rooted babies um been selling in between um a thousand to um twelve hundred if that makes sense um it just depends on the baby in the size and you know uh the rooting that's babies with hair of course if I didn't say that already but anyway I'm gonna get his diaper changed um like I said this is Nigel Nigel is Willow Awake, um, the prototype number three by Claire Teller. And um, he is definitely my all-time, one of my all-time favorites of Claire painting styles. Claire changed her painting styles like almost every edition seemed like. And, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's pretty consistent or whatever, but... Um, you know, sometimes I like it more, sometimes I like it less, you know, um, it just depends. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, not so much, that sculpt, this sculpt, blah, 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 you know. It's just how it goes with anything in art because you're drawn to what you're drawn to. And usually we're drawn to stuff that's familiar. So, you know, something that may be cute to you may not be cute to me. But a lot of times it's cute to you because it reminds you of your family or yourself or a baby that you think you would have had or... You know all those good things that you know trigger us to be drawn to these lifelike dolls and but then you know my family may not be that cute to you so what's drawn to me you you may not like so that's why it's always a personal preference and um the community has shamed me for the last few years for being a big fan 
of you know I get stuck on one artist that's my thing I'll get stuck on one artist and I've done this over the years of collecting um even with my reborns if you go if you guys remember people that's been following me you guys have been following me for a long time I bought nothing but yogi babies as far as reborns and then I went for years and years and it was yogi 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 and then I did marlin babies and then I was having marlin babies and I went back to yogi babies and um like I said, you know, I know Yogi has her ups and downs. I don't um, communicate with Yogi um, at this point, and I don't follow her. I don't know what she's doing as far as her art goes and stuff like that. But um, I, it's something about her work that I used to connect to, and um, it just always just really draw me to it. And it wasn't perfection like. Some of the artists that I had seen at doll shows that had flawless paint jobs. But some of those people that had flawless paint jobs, their dolls was like pretty dolls. They didn't have that baby thing. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. So, you know, sometimes it just depends on what you're looking for in your dolls. Because, like I said, again, it's preference. Because some people want that clean, crisp look. Um, and... You know, I also used to, when I used to do customs a lot, I would see a sculpt and I can almost imagine a particular artist painting that sculpt. Like, I knew that so-and-so would nail that sculpt. Like, that's that's the sculpt that they, they, they would do really well at that. So, I want her to paint it for me type thing. Um, oh, no, I don't want that one done by so-and-so because that, that she, 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 she not going to do well with that one. But so-and-so would do well with this one. You see what I'm saying? Like that. But, you know, a lot of people do price shaming. And, ooh, this is a big diaper book. I was going to try to put you on it. Yeah. All right, let's see. <laughs> this is a size two. The biggest I've ever put them on was a size one. So, I don't know about that. But maybe if I fold it a lot. I was going to put it on him because of his, he's about to wear Mickey. So, I was like, okay, well, I'll put him on it. Come on. Scoop boop. Don't show you boop boop. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Because sometimes these diapers are not that much of a difference. Um... in size as we think so sometime it works and it does look at that it's it's perfectly okay he'll he'll be okay um but yeah this 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 community does a lot of price shaming and i probably do it too to a certain extent depending on how you want to um qualify it um or define it i should say like people be like oh i would never pay this or that's too much for that doll blah 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 you know and i know i'm guilty of saying that i don't know if i say it publicly or whatever because i don't really remember what i say because i don't have like a script that i go by i don't write down notes a lot of times and i mean if i'm doing a live and i'm trying to hit a certain topic i might write down like key phrases so i remember to address certain things but when I do my videos like this in the morning, I just sit down and make a video and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. So, um, or, you know, just go with the flow. But what was I saying? Price shaming. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, people will say, oh, that's too much or I can't afford that. I'm not paying that. And then you'll see them pop up with a doll that's like, not that great or something or you know because it was a good price and I've I've you know over the years like I said I'm I go back and forth I have my phases I would spend a lot of money on my dolls that I love but you know certain dolls certain mediums I have like a margin like I'm not going over this I'm not going over that but I've broken those internal rules if you want to call it that 
um, a, a couple times because it's something that I really, really want and I felt like it was worth it. Um, but I, as a, a seller, I learned the hard way of discounting my work or discounting my dolls in my collection for collectors when they like give you the poor mouth and and when I say give you the poor mouth they'll be like oh I can I'm trying I'm gonna get it up I, I don't know this is you know it's this is a lie would you be willing to take blah 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 and sometimes you know you be like okay you really just want to sell so you go ahead they get you hyped up you think you got to sell and then they come back with that hit you with that would you take such and such and it'd be close to the number but not quite and you do that but I've learned the hard way that those collectors are professionals at that because I did that a couple times with certain collectors and next thing I know they got like three more expensive dolls back to back in their collection like so you really had the money but you just you know lowballed me you know what I mean so um I I set my price what it is and that's that. If I want a quick sell, I have a number in my head and I go with that. And you may say, well, why don't just go with the number that you pay? Well, it's a lot of variables to that. First of all, um, number one is sometime the price that I paid may be higher than what I'm listing it for. So if you really want to stick to that, we can stick to that, but it's not always to your advantage. Second of all, the other thing is, let's say maybe I had, you know, and this has happened to me before with my Reborns. I did a, like a trade and, um, or the artist messed up something of mine, so this happened to me. Oh, this happened to one time, and people made a big deal. They didn't even know the story. The artist had messed up about three or four of my dolls, right? And she made me a doll for free. And it was kind of like a thank you for being patient. Thank you for, you know, bringing me so much business. It was like, thank you for not putting me on blast for messing up your doll, so to speak. You know, it was like one of those unspoken things like that. But at the same time, when, you know, I kept the doll for a while. But when I decided to sell the doll, what was I supposed to do? Give it away for free? No, I put the value on it on with what the doll was worth. And, you know, because I don't know, I guess maybe the artist told other collectors and it circulated it, that she did the doll for me for free. I don't know. And everybody made a big not everybody, but a circle of people made a big deal about it. And I'm just like, it's my doll. If somebody give you a Corvette, if your mom buy you a Corvette and you decide that you want a BMW the next year, you gonna give it away because your mom gave it to you? Girl, bye. So, um, you know, people just need to understand. And not only that, you know, I've, I've heard another collector that, uh, that's been around for a long time and she cracks me up. I'm not gonna call her name because she kind of mean too. I don't want to get beat up. At the next doll show but um <laughs> i heard her say in the forum one time and it was actually during the time when they was trying to subliminally call me out on it um she was like well guess what my discount price is not gonna be my price that i'm gonna sell my doll if i got a discount guess what that don't mean you get my discount because you know she's close friends with a, a sculptor or whatever or friends with different sculptors and they might give her discounts and if she put her dolls up she put it up for what it's worth there's another thing um if you got a very sold out limited edition doll that is very rare and hard to find and you bought it at a time that was you got a good price on it but now every doll like that is selling for double what you paid heck yeah i'm gonna sell mine for the same double what i paid I know y'all might don't like to hear it, but yeah, why not? I mean, any other collectible item, you would do it. So, it's a difference. It's one thing if you just go out looking for people that's having hard times trying to sell or, you know, you just scouting for discounts, deals, and you're just buying to resell. That's called flipping. Like, you just 
buying a buying a flip, buying a flip, buying a flip, and pretending like you love the hobby. And even then, it's really your business, and it's up to the collector whether they find it valuable and they want it. But for me, I don't find those people to be like real collectors. I feel like, you know, I don't know what you want to call them, but you know, they they're they're in it for the business part, I guess. Um. So, and I know it's a lot of it, it's also a lot of people that do that as well, but. If you're just collecting, you know, collecting your babies and then when you get ready to sell, you sell it for what the market value is, I don't see nothing wrong with that part. Anyway, um, my point is, you know, like I said, Nigel is my most expensive baby. I think he's the most expensive baby that I've actually bought in all my years of collecting. And the point is, is that I, I know I said I would never spend xyz on a doll and i've said this behind the scenes not to you guys i you know i i said i'm not going over this amount and then i said i would not spend that much on a kit so to speak because technically he's a kit he's a prototype which to me once if claire totally completes him to me it's a it's the same as a doll because it's not just a regular kit that like i painted phoebe type thing um this is the whole artist work which just puts it in a whole nother you know level but um I had said I would never do it but I really really love Nigel and you find a way so you will find a way to make it work um Noah you know I had help that was a different story but Nigel you know, I you know I have to put my my little butt to work for him. So, and I I really you know I feel like he's worth every single penny and some. Um, I've collected numerous Clarella dolls. I've seen um, too many to count in person from doll meetups, doll shows, um, stuff like that. And I absolutely love her work, but sometimes. She does certain painting styles that really, really, I really, really love. And I hadn't seen her do this before. And so I was really, really excited about it. And on this particular sculpt that I absolutely love, I, it's just, you know, to me, priceless. So, you know, guys, you know, my other painting that baby that I I love and, and that one was a custom for me was Puck. Puck Santana, which is now with Sun Sun Babies, Reborn Babies. Um to me, Puck had the most exquisite paint job. And I don't care what baby I had, I always still thought Puck was my best. I mean, I felt like the way Claire painted him, which she don't paint that way anymore, it was like just amazing like he just was so flawless i mean he is he still is his mommy is taking very good care of him she posts pictures and stuff like that and he still looks like he's being taken care of really good um but so you know it's like one in a lifetime that you get that and i i actually um like it's crazy if i had money to keep them all i would i, I would actually Puck is one baby that I would actually buy back if I could because of the paint job on him. Like, he's just amazing. So, and that's how I feel about when I got Nigel. I was like, oh my God, oh. I was like, this this work. I, I was so, you know, worried that I'd never see that. See, and they, they have total different paint jobs. But I thought I'd never see that type of perfection to my taste. And when I say that, I mean to my taste. Um, because, you know, you know I go on and on about you know, Claire's work, Claire Taylor's work, but, um, you know, every now and then you be like, dang, I wish you would have did this, or I wish you would have done that, or blah, 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 but when you get one, there's just like, oh my God, this is it, you know what I mean? So, anyway, um, some of you guys may have seen when I posted pictures of, like, my son when he was first born, and, you know, different stuff like that, like, he was he he didn't have much color um and it took him a while 
and so um you know so i'm i'm very used to the skin tones but anyway my point is is that if we really really want something bad enough we'll work towards it and get it some stuff is just ridiculously out of your price range and it's best then at that point to evaluate what is your true price range that you're going to be comfortable with and still enjoy the baby after you actually purchase it and then go and see what's in that price range and then get the best bang for your buck and when i say that get the baby that really that you really really love that you know that you will enjoy in your collection for what you really can afford because i've bought outside of my price range before and I've been very uncomfortable. And I've learned that I tend to hold on to the babies that, you know, I don't have to stress. I didn't have to stress or put myself in a tough spot to buy. So now I'm pretty much just looking for more affordable babies. But I'm actually holding on to some my very expensive babies because that time has passed for me. And I know I probably won't be able to get another one for a long time. So... The babies that I do have that's very expensive, I've decided don't put them up for sale. As bad as you might want the money, hold on to them. So that's why I've been holding on to Nigel, Nigel and Noah. And um, so Nigel, Noah, and Phoebe will probably be my three full body silicones for a long time unless I find a really cheap um, preemie full body kit. So I paint for myself. But anyway, that is that. This is a long video as I've been doing a lot of long videos. But I don't get to talk to you guys that often because I'm doing a lot of painting. And um, like right now, basically the only reason I'm doing this video is because I just got through doing a touch up on my preemie for her matting. And then uh, so I do a video in between and then I'm going to do her nails and her glossing and all that stuff last. And then she'll get a good, 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 good bath. Well, she'll get a good, good bath after a matting or whatever, whatever. Anyway, and then she'll be ready for ball pictures. And then I'm going to attempt to start rooting next week on her. But I have other customs that I'm going to I'm gonna pause on her and then work on them. And that's kind of how it goes. That's another story. I'll come back with a video about that. Just one moment. 